So in our social distancing, it's important we keep at least one cow apart, six feet or seven feet or two meters apart. So just imagine there's a cow in between you and the next person. And if you're outside, hopefully you should be fine. And thank you to Lisa, I think in Virginia, for sending that in. Welcome, it's Friday the 22nd of May. Now, the Center for Disease Control in the United States has just released some new guidelines on how this disease spread. And I was reading some newspaper headlines and it looked a bit confusing. I was kind of getting a bit of mixed messages from the newspaper headlines and the TV headlines. And to be fair, the Center for Disease Control hasn't done itself many favors in this pandemic in terms of public relations, and it certainly dropped the ball once or twice. So what I did was rather than read the newspaper headlines, I went straight to the Center for Disease Control site. And when you get there, you find the materials are really quite superb, absolutely world class material written by world class experts. It's just a pity that the message seems to get a bit lost in translation somewhere from the Centre for Disease Control. Now that's not to say they didn't drop the ball on testing, they certainly did, but let's look at this because it's actually very good. Now throughout, to be fair, the Centre for Disease Control are saying that, you know, this is a new virus, there's things we don't know, this is subject to change, but this is the state of play so far. This is the current knowledge we have. That's why I felt it's important to bring it to you, to clarify these basic principles that everyone in the world right now needs to understand. So I went on to, um, I've gone on to that one again, that's the wrong one. But a very good poster nonetheless. We want to look at this one, don't we? This is in the notes, right? So, um, Center for Disease Control, how COVID-19 spreads. And go directly to the website rather than going through intermediate press releases, I think is, is part of the moral of this story, really. So they're saying the virus spreads mainly through person-to-person -person transmission. This is the main driver of transmission. It's from one person to another. So most infections are going from me as an infected person to you as a non-infected person and not going via some intermediate thing, which we call a fomite. It's straight person to person. Between people who are in close contact with one another within about six feet or two meters. So that's where most spread is taking place. Now, to be fair, this social distance, this two meters or six, seven feet, I think it's okay if you're outside because outside is well ventilated. And when you're breathing outside, the virus is greatly diluted very quickly. Because someone's probably not going to get infected if they just get a few of these viruses. The likelihood of getting infected and how sick you get depends on the viral load. So you're going to need a certain amount of viruses to cause the infection. And if you're talking to another person outside two, three meters away, two meters away anyway, three meters would be better, of course, and that person has the infection and you're just talking to them outside, even if they're infected, you shouldn't catch it because of the dilution effect in the atmosphere. But if you're only two meters apart indoors for a long period of time, then I believe that the droplets and the viruses from an infected person can spread out gradually. And if there's no fresh air to blow that away to dilute the viral load, then I do believe that's a risk. So outside, this is fine. Inside, it's questionable. And there's a lot of cases of people contracting the virus just by being in the same room as other people. The closer they are, the more likely they are to catch it. But it also depends on how long you're there as well. So being outdoors two meters is fine. Being indoors, I believe it very much depends on the quality of the ventilation and the air systems as we've looked at quite a lot recently. So the center for disease control go on through respiratory droplets produced when an infected person coughs, sneezes or talks. So again, we know this. So breathing will give out some of the virus, but if you talk, it's going to give out more. If you cough, it's going to go even further. And if you sneeze, it's going to go even further than that. But talking to someone, especially indoors, is enough to catch the virus. There we go. It's very simple, but nicely clarified by the Center for Disease Control. Absolutely vital to know about. You cannot be talking to other people, especially indoors, unless you're at least two meters away from them. And even indoors, I'm not happy with that because it depends how well ventilated it is. 
Now these droplets from the infected person can land in the mouth or nose of people who are nearby, possibly be inhaled into the lungs. In other words, the infection goes from my mucous membranes as an infected person in my droplets through the air into your mucous membranes. And trust me, you do not want your my droplets in your mucous membranes if I am infected. So keep your droplets out of my mucous membranes is the saying, isn't it? So it's direct person to person. <clears throat> and as well as that, they, they emphasise, as we know, uh, COVID-19 may be spread by people who are not showing infection because of the pre-symptomatic and the asymptomatic. So again, quite useful clarification there. The virus is spreading very easily. Now, this was interesting. Very easily. And sustainably. In other words, there's chains of transmission from person to person. And it's spreading more effectively than influenza. So it's easier to catch COVID-19 from an infected person than it is to, to catch influenza from an infected person. And the big difference is people can be shedding the COVID-19 virus when they're feeling absolutely fine. That basically is why we have a pandemic. That's been the main driver of transmission. So, so far, so good. Nice to have the clarification, but nothing particularly new there from the Centre for Disease Control. Now, this is where their messages got a bit confused, I think. But if you actually read what they say, it's absolutely spot on. But you've got to go back to the original source, really. Because what the newspapers have picked up on is the virus does not spread readily in other ways. And that's not really what the Centre for Disease Control is saying. What they're saying is the main driver of transmission is respiratory direct person to person. That's the main driver. So it's... So what they're saying is if you look at all the cases in the world, the vast majority of those people who've caught them will have caught it directly from another person. And only a minority will have caught it from contaminated surfaces and other, other fomites. So from touching surfaces or objects, that's not thought to be the main way the virus spreads. They are not saying the virus does not spread through viruses and surfaces. This is where the confusion has arisen. So they're saying the main driver of transmission is respiratory droplets. And less people have contracted the virus through contaminated surfaces. So they're saying it's not the main way, but they still say it is a possible way. It just doesn't account for most cases in the world is what they're saying. So can you see why the message has been sort of misinterpreted by quite a few people really? It was kind of, it's an easy message to misinterpret, but it's actually an accurate scientific, scientifically accurate uh, based on what we have at the moment. Now, just to bear in mind, we've looked at this paper once or twice. The New England Journal of Medicine said the virus can live. Now, when we say live, what we mean is, we, we, we can argue whether this virus is alive or dead, but when we say it's alive, what I mean is that it's capable of causing infection in another, peop in another person. So as far as I'm concerned, the virus is alive if it can get into my mucous membranes and infect me. That's how I define a live virus, able to cause active infection. And this is the case with surfaces. So the virus is live, able to cause infection for four hours on copper, 24 hours on cardboard and up to two to three days on plastic and stainless steel. So there you go. It can live for days. And another group of surfaces, which is particularly a problem, are surfaces around about public toilets. Now, quite a lot of people are going to the beach because it's a nice weekend. And in the States, again, in Brazil, people are going to the beach. Not so much of a problem in its own right. But all those people need to go to the toilet on a fairly regular basis. And there are people in that crowd that are infected. So if you're separated two, three, four, five metres sunning yourself on a beach from someone else, you're not going to get infected from them. Because even if they are infected, the dilution of the viral load outside is not going to infect you. It's not going to be a sufficient infective viral load. But if you share a toilet with them, that's a different matter. Because the virus can be excreted in stools, probably in urine, 
and their breath will be contaminating taps and things like that. So toilets are particularly dirty surfaces. So what concerns me about people going out again is not so much people going out, not so much traveling on their own bikes or even in their own family cars to get somewhere and then being spread out when they get there. What really concerns me is when they do come together and, 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 and toileting is one of those things. So that's something to seriously bear in mind. And of course, the longer the virus will survive on a surface depends on the temperature, how long it will survive. So at uh, five degrees centigrade, it could last for a lot longer. It could last for a week rather than two to three days. So two to three days is at moderate uh, temperatures. As the temperature goes up, the, the time of the virus uh, lives for will go down. So five degrees centigrade is probably the peak time for viral survival. But at moderate temperatures, the virus can survive for two to three days on plastic and uh, stainless steel. That means if someone's coughed on it, you touch it, it gets onto your hands. It does not go through the skin in your hands, but it can go to your mucous membranes when you touch your face. So again, the CDC are not saying this is not the case. They are agreeing with this. It's just the way they've said it is, has been open to a bit of misinterpretation, which is unfortunate because there are superb materials there. So it's not the main driver of transmission. <clears throat> now, they do answer a couple of other interesting questions. Um, what about from animals to people? So we looked yesterday that hamsters can catch this. Uh, dogs, to some degree, cats more so. Uh, cats are well known to have uh, coronavirus infections. But from animals to people, so the chances of you catching it from your pets, from you getting it from your pet, is a very low risk. So that is a very low risk. And this is them being conservative. They're just not saying it's impossible, but it's, it's very unlikely. Now, from people to animals, can you contaminate your animals? Virus can spread from people to animals, including cats and dogs. So the chances of you infecting your animal, your cat or your dog, is way higher than your cat or your dog infecting you. So if someone in the family is sick with COVID-19, uh, they should be nursed in a room on their own with the door shut and the window open, if that is possible within the confines of the house. Uh, they should just, uh, food and uh, drink should just be delivered to them. If possible, they should have their own toilet, although of course that's not always possible. And unfortunately, the cats and the dogs should also be kept out of the room. That's the advice I would currently give. But it's only for a few days. After seven days, when the symptoms go away, uh, you should be no longer infectious certainly after eight days, and uh, if you still have symptoms, then you can be infectious for longer. So it just means you can't see your cat or your dog for a few days, and hopefully other members of the household can look after the animal during that time. And that's actually quite difficult, because when you're sick and you've got a dog, it's wonderfully comforting. But there is an element of risk uh, to your cat or your dog if you decide to do that. It may be a risk you decide to take, of course. I mean, that's, that's quite reasonable, because dogs are very comforting. And hopefully the dog will get a very minor illness, if any at all. But that's what the CDC is saying. So best way to prevent illness is to avoid being exposed to the virus. <laughs> you don't need the CDC to tell you that, but uh, at least they've said it, so that's fine. And three ways to do that. Social distancing, washing your hands, routinely cleaning and disinfecting surfaces. Now, the CDC specifically say wash your hands and routinely clean and disinfecting surfaces. <laughs> Having said that... The main way the virus is transmitted is via direct droplets from one person to another and by the air from one person to another. Um, so they're not saying it's not transmitted via surfaces. They are. They're just saying it doesn't account for most cases in the world. So a bit confusing. But now you've watched this, hopefully between you and me, we've got it worked out now. Um, you can take steps to slow the spread, of course. For example, keeping one cow apart. Now, the other thing that's been talked about today is water transmission, especially with people going out and about. Now, the Centre for Disease Control is saying there's no evidence uh, for water transmission. Now, this has been a bit confusing because I've had a lot of uh, questions from sewage workers because we know that the virus is excreted in stools and probably urine. And there are cases of the virus being uh, taken from sewage. So uh, there's no question that sewage can be infected. But of course, we want to avoid sewage at the best of time. So 
what about other water? Well, viruses don't tend to like water very much, and, and certainly they don't like seawater very much. The salt would not be good for the virus at all. Uh, if you were swimming in fresh water, then that virus would probably be very, very diluted, so transmission would be a very minimal risk in water. So seawater, remarkably unlikely, massive dilution. Lake or river swimming, again, a high degree of dilution. More unlikely in the sea, but still unlikely in river or fresh water. Um, and in chlorinated water, like swimming pools and paddling pools, well, the chlorine will kill the virus really quickly. Low concentrations of chlorine will kill the virus quickly. So paddling pools and swimming pools actually wouldn't be too big a risk at all, very low risk from the water. The question I would ask is how well ventilated is the air above the swimming pool because of the direct person-to-person -person transmission in the droplets would be the more important uh, question. And of course the toilets and the changing rooms and all that kind of stuff. So there, there we go, um, the Disease Control, Centre for Disease Control, putting out really good material. Pity it's uh, open to misinterpretation, but go to the website and you'll find this materials are really good. As of now, what I've just told you now, bang up to date, best information we've got. There you go.